the dance. And I think a lot of ladies like that. And I'm really glad it's coming back. And Derek completely took me by surprise. And then he was so um, outgoing with older women. I mean, anybody's older than he is. And he's 16, so, you know, in our group, you know. And no hesitation at all to dance with anybody on up the ladder. I, on the other hand, I was quite shy about the whole thing. It took me a long time to feel enough confidence to actually feel comfortable out of dance. It's just a good excuse kind of to ask someone to dance. And then once you're on the dance floor, it's kind of like an icebreaker. And afterwards, you guys can, you know, talk about how you did or, you know, maybe ask for another dance. You don't have to talk about the weather. You know, you can talk about, oh, well, you know, where did you learn how to dance? And uh, what workshops have you gone to? And do you like, you know, this style of dance better than that style of dance? It gives us conversation. That uh, helps a lot. The nice little treat there was that Ed, he started making a lot more friends quicker than I was, and so, you know, so he's like my pimp, you know. And, you know <laughs> said, oh, you're Derek's dad. Nice to meet you. Once upon a time, I thought that life would be hard for me. And in a day when the concept of courtship has been turned on its ear, Swing provides a clearer and less complicated view. This way, we can get up close and personal with the opposite sex, not worry about any diseases, not worry about the morning after, and yet get that rush of being close to the opposite sex. You care to join me on that big dance floor? You'll find much more. Come on and swing, let's swing. I think in the 90s, we've kind of lost a sense of in dating. Well, should I call him? Should he call me? Does he open the door? Do I open the door? Do I pay? Does he pay? In dance, it's like, look, the guy's going to lead. You're going to follow very easy. In that way, it gives us some very clearly defined roles. Roles which usually end with the song. The ever-growing popularity of the swing scene is evident here. It's 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, and on these hallowed grounds, the Pasadena Ballroom Dance Association, or PBDA, prepares for a day of business. On this day, three swing classes are taught. Advanced, intermediate, and this one, the beginner's class. Stevens and her sister Tammy run the PBDA. They've been credited for bringing traditional swing dance back to Los Angeles, generally considered the center of the neo-swing scene. Having seen the film A Day at the Races, the Marx Brothers movie, we were totally inspired from that film and wanted to find the dancers that were in that film. father gave us a life magazine that he had that the title of it was Lindy Hop and it featured some of the same dancers that were in the film so suddenly we knew they were dancing Lindy Hop and we had their names and we knew that they were from New York so we went to New York in search of the roots of swing we did locate um, several of the original dancers and they were still alive and willing to work with us <laughs> And we came back and discovered that nobody was teaching this kind of steps and there was a big need for it. Well, it just started to grow. We started with maybe 10 students and then 20 and then 100. And then it got to the point that we were teaching in two buildings every night of the week with close to 300 people a night. Clubs that offer swing venues also offer free dance classes early on in the evening. It's a way to reach those venturing out in the swing scene for the first time. And for many, their stories are almost identical. 
it basically started one night a friend of mine said do you want to go swing dancing and I said okay I'll give it a shot um, I was immediately hooked I was totally inspired I would get sick and I would still go it's been like very catchy and contagious and I haven't haven't given it up since eventually I actually got kind of not embarrassed to dance The swing movement draws participants from a wide age group. And for William Milan, swing has completely transformed his life. I was a man who didn't own a hat. Now I own 14. When it comes to dancing, there's the casual dancer, and then there's the fanatic. And Bill, or Lindy Bill, as he's known around the clubs and dance halls, will be the first to admit... I'm a dance bum. You know, there's beach bums and there's ski bums. And people like me are, are dance bums. And I've danced Lindy Hop to techno when I've been forced to. I have to dance. It's just my... It's in me. It's my passion. For many, like Lindy Bill, swing isn't just a passion, it's a lifestyle. It's not like an addiction, like you're addicted to cigarettes or anything like that. It's like you have to and you're going to freak out if you don't. But because you get such a high from dancing to that type of music, you want to go out more and more. Debbie Smith is an English expatriate living in L.A. For her, the swing thing is all-encompassing. There's a high cheese aspect to the modern swing trend, where you're encouraged to buy stuff just because it's the trend. I promote a swing band from England, so my whole day is taken up with swing music. My clothes, my wardrobe is just vintage clothing. My house in England, and before I moved away from it, was, was vintage furniture and, you know, all the crockery and the cutlery and everything. You know, it was just like going into a time warp. My job took me here, and I've been here for quite a few months now. I realised there is such a big scene over here. This is, this is where it's happening. Swing dance in Europe has been going for a long time, probably longer than it has here, but it's still more of an underground thing. It hasn't hit commercially like it has over here. In Europe, it's not the way yet, but I'm sure it will. I'm sure it'll hit there. The diverse demographic that swing attracts has captured the attention of the marketing pros. At the end of the century, the concept of hip marketing has definitely taken on the look and feel of retro in everything from posters, billboards, and even magazine layouts. There was a real positive vibe that went along with um, the whole new swing movement, and I think that the mainstream public really grabbed that. And Typically, you know, we have a hard time taking music and using it in a spot unless we're specifically going after a very narrow demographic. Tonight, but what swing can do for us is it, it actually broadens that out. Um, we don't have to worry about that as much because you see young and old enjoying it. We'll cut a rug while you groove on 90210. <laughs> Just one five. It is said that the advertising seen on TV and in print reflects the society in which we live and by this standard uh, yeah I think it is mainstream I really do I I, I, I know about it <laughs> that's a big step even the fashion industry always ahead of trends has developed a line of old style new threads for us dressing in, in nice clothes when we play music is sort of a tribute because I mean our heroes are jazz American jazz players they look good when they play music you know that was their whole thing is is the music was cool and those guys they all looked right they all looked cool and they respected what they did so we took that that aspect of the music part and it's kind of cool that it sort of socially caught on to a younger generation of people who weren't really dressing or, or even figuring that you know what that's not that bad you know that's kind of cool guys can actually wear cool clothes and look cool not look like they're wearing a monkey suit the biggest mystery in swing fashion is the dance shoes they must be black and white or brown and white why no one really knows but any serious dancer can't be without a pair and really what is the difference between a thrift shop and a vintage shop in this thrift shop a pair of jeans cost 495 but in a vintage shop a pair of jeans can also cost 495 that is 495 with occasional markdowns
You know, there's a there's a level of uh, it has with me. It's a sort of a shyness thing, also. I mean, it took me a long time before I wanted to wear dance shoes because it's like as soon as you put those shoes on, people expect something from you. You know, well, I'm not as much into the exact vintage thing as the as the kids are, as I call them, because uh, to me, I I got into my particular style of clothing, which was kind of a. Uh, a showbiz clothes rather than a vintage clothes. I don't try to be imitating 1940. The guys come in with these pinstripe suits or suits. suits. You better be able to dance really well to justify those clothes. That's the way I look at it. I think um, I look on it just as more as my style. And um, I didn't know when I got into it that I was going to be into this flash bit. I remember when I first started out, the first time I saw a zoot suit, I said, who in the world is that idiot? Six months later, I was that idiot in a, in a, in a zoot suit. You the man, dog. It is this healthy and playful attitude of dressing up, having fun, and not taking yourself seriously that is the spirit of the scene. The clothing ranges from, you know, the early 1900s all the way till the year 2000, and, and people are wearing everything in between. Swing is, is not, not necessarily the clothing, but it's the attitude. An attitude that at one time, a lot of people would have called square. A lot of the swing people, they're very, they're very clean people. There's not drug taking or even alcohol. They're just really just happy to be out there dancing, and that's how they get their kicks. That's how they get their high. You feel like dancing. I guess it kind of has a sort of cleaner reputation. The dancers, when they go out, I think they, they're known to drink water and stuff. I think only based on the fact that they're out, they're really dancing, and I mean, you can't really get drunk and, and pull off all those moves and stuff. You gotta have pep, bim and burr, zing, zip, and ginger. So much so that some nightclubs are catered to the swing crowd have started to charge for a glass of tap water. The stamina needed to swing dance also blends well with another popular trend. Swing is the perfect scene for the health-conscious, athletically-minded society. Welcome to the Cardio Swing Aerobic class. Like if you've seen country line dancing, well there's also swing almost line dancing and it's called Shim Sham or Big Apple, that kind of stuff. So we pulled that in there so again you don't require a partner but yet you can still get that swing style. Swing has, especially, and why it was so easy to create a, an aerobic workout from it, is that swing is very fast-paced. The basics are easy to do. Um, the music's fun. It's high energy, um, and it's different. Like if you were to go dance at the club, you're going to get almost the same aerobic workout you would get if you came here. It's just here. It's a little bit more controlled environment. You don't need a partner, so the pressure's taken off. No guys have to lead a girl. The first thing I did when I got into Lindy is I lost 50 pounds. Uh, you can't do it at, uh, at overweight. It's about health. It's about, you know, well-being. It adds to the whole concept of, of quality of life. You can't dance every dance. It's so taxing, you know, you die, you know, so you do have time between the dances, and at which point you can, well, speaking for myself. Anyway. It's, uh, it's a great way to meet girls, I'll tell you about that. You go to a club and you can see three generations of people dancing together. I dance with guys of 18 and I've danced with guys of 88. And you dance exactly the same way. It's balanced out my other life, which is great. You know, because dentistry can get a little boring. <laughs> oh, and also, swing dancing has opened up more patience to me. A lot of the swing people are coming to me for dentistry, so it works hand in hand. I think the swing scene kind of creates a good blend of everything for everyone. For some people, it could be the music. For others, it could be a chance to meet other people. This is dancing, not romancing. Let's face it, I'm 64 and I'm running around with 24-year-old women. They're not interested in me romantically. The resurgence of swing and its steady growth in popularity worldwide has also been heavily influenced by the Internet. I think one of the biggest roles that the Internet plays is uh, disseminating information. It's a way for people to connect with the people they like to hang out with and know where so-and-so is going on Tuesday night. Log on to the net and run a search on two words, Lindy Hop. When I first started looking for swing dancing on the web, I found five or six sites. I did another search a few months later and all of a sudden there were hundreds of sites. 
While many would consider the internet solitary and antisocial, keeping people locked in their homes instead of out interacting with others, swing dancers instead see their corner of the web as a way to get on the dance floor, keeping up with the latest happenings, band appearances, radio shows and club dates, a virtual World Wide Web of Swing. Well, what's funny is that at the same time, swing scene seems to be old-fashioned, but they are all like on, on the net, and, and the, the, the way that people get, get along together and know each other, it's very much goes with high technology, so it's very funny. It's a family, so just everyone just lets everyone else know, and the internet is very good for that. There's always just any number, dozens of postings every day on what's going on around the country. It's hard to stay out of the loop. I um, picked up a uh, name on AOL for my email name of, of Lindy Bill, and it caught on with the crowd. And now I'm known as Lindy Bill. I have my cards made up that way. I started doing the traveling around the country, and I've become a bogus celebrity at this this point on it. That I'm very well, very well known. I'm way beyond my dance ability, but I'm enjoying the devil out of it, and I push it for what it's worth. Why not? Swing dancing just happens to be something you can't do by yourself. So we use the internet to connect to each other, and then we find out where we're all going, and we all go there. I think it was surveyed once that over 60% of swing dancers are online, and you can find out anything. Anything you want to do, you can look for your clothes, you can find out what clubs are going on, you can even learn dance moves over the internet. I, it, it'll just keep growing. So now there's swing dancing everywhere, there's information everywhere on the web, everywhere. It's huge. In the local Los Angeles scene, getting on the right email list can make or break your social life. This is one of the more popular websites in Southern California. It offers a weekly calendar of events and links to other sites. But this site is famous for its large email list. If you're on it, you'll receive an email about anything and everything that swings in L.A. I started keeping track of addresses and phone numbers of places to dance and put it up on the web so that these people could access it. Um, and it just took off from there. Margie's email service also offers a forum where you can post inquiries and personal advertisements. I have had some people who have sent me something that says, that says, looking for a dance partner, this is where I live, this is what I'm looking for, this is my skill level. Um, and I put it in the forum. And I don't know whether or not they've ever found anyone, but it's there. <laughs> And being the internet, merchandise is sold here. Everything from those dance shoes, zoot suits and dresses, accessories, CDs, video and books on swing, furnishings, old stuff, new stuff, everything a swing aficionado could want or need is found here, including dance venues like this one. This is the Monsters of Swing, a yearly event put on by the Flying Lindy Hoppers, a Southern California dance exhibition group. This event takes place over a three-day period. The event includes several dance classes and clinics teaching techniques and dance moves for all the different swing styles. Dancers of all levels get a chance to improve on their skills. Well, in England, swing has been going on for 15 years. It's not um, a passing fad. The States really has picked up in the past two years where it's become this huge thing called swing, you know. This particular venue attracted mostly local swing fans from Southern California. There were, however, a few who flew in from all around the country. And at the end of each day... This is just one big party. <laughs> It is day two at this venue, and tonight the band Indigo Swing is playing for a crowd in excess of 1,500. For those attending the dance clinics this weekend, they get a chance to practice what they learned. It's a great place to just meet different swingers from different areas, especially if you want to dance with somebody and you're looking to travel, you want to learn how they dance, because everybody interprets music differently, and so you want to kind of be able to take their style and, and dance with it and kind of incorporate that into what you do. It's, it's lovely to see different styles, and there are so many different styles of swing. There's not just the one way to do it, because there is no right way, there is no wrong way, as long as you, you have some form in your movement, that's, that's what it's all about. 
in almost every swing event, there is what is called a jam, where only dancers possessing the bravest of hearts and lightest of feet perform what can only be described as awe-inspiring dance moves. like these take place all over the world. To find the one nearest you, just look it up on the web. Sites for cities and towns across America, and for that matter, around the world, will tell you where all the action is. Internet and dance venues have obviously been the catalyst for swing's resurgence, but there's yet another reason. Dance clubs in L.A. have been able to draw in a group often ignored, the under-18 crowd. For clubs that combine a restaurant with a dance floor, there really are no age limitations. This is a well-known dance hangout in Anaheim, just south of L.A. Tonight is the birthday of the club's very popular DJ, Wolfman, and the jam is given in his honor. As a prank, they're playing headbanger music, but the dance is swing with a bit of slam thrown in. After the Wolfman's birthday slam jam, the club goes back to being what it normally is, a home to some of the best and youngest dancers in Southern California. It started when I was 12 and I'm 14 now, so about two years. In my school, I'm basically the only one who does it. Everyone comes up and asks me how to, how to dance and what it's like. And some of them think that the boys that I dance with are cute. And I like that. <laughs> my close friends, they think it's really cool that I do this. And my best friend is really proud of me. She likes to come and watch me. I screwed up my leg really bad. And so I'm a little bit more cautious about how I, what flips I do. And I am kind of at the stage where I like meeting cute guys, but I don't look forward to it as much as most girls do. Like I don't spend my nights at home dreaming about some guy. I guess, but if I meet somebody, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that yet. I enjoy it and I enjoy the people that I do it with and I like learning the new things and they all kind of motivate me when they tell me how good I am and that keeps me going. I like the music. It's a lot of fun. I see these kids here, it just floors me completely. They're 16, 17 years old, flying with timing, with footwork, full of energy. And uh, sometimes it makes me feel a little bit old when I, when I get to watch some of this, but, but I try to keep up with it. And what they do, they come to me and they ask me, how do you do this, Bernie? How do you do that, Bernie? And I go in and I help them out one at a time here, there. I started dancing in 1949. My goodness, that's 50 years, isn't it? 68-year-old Bernie Dovebish was a teenager when a bus ran over both his legs. It took him over two years to recover from that accident. Sometimes I can run around the block fast, sometimes I can't make it across a lot. Despite this, Bernie not only learned to dance, but he made a career of it and touched those closest to him with the dancing bug. He opened me to the world of swing dancing and I figured I'd better, better do something because it's what he does. <laughs> My dad taught me how to dance. I've been doing it ever since. It's great. I love it. 
We were the only family that would go out dancing with our child, and we taught her when she was very small. She's about four years old. We were out at a club, and she was just sitting, we'd take her out instead of babysitters. And um, I would sit there, very prim, very proper, hands in the lap, and um, very bored. And my dad said, what's wrong? She said, I'm bored. Bernie said, do you want to do you want to learn how to dance? I said, yeah. She took off from there, didn't sit down since. <laughs> law school so that's a lot of work a lot of studying it can be stressful when you're swing dancing you can't think of anything else at all you're dressed up you're in a nice little outfit you're dancing to good music with friendly people you can't beat it ages. I mean, anywhere from high school people, you know, like 15 years old to people like 80 years old. And then there's a huge, huge range of occupations. They can be students, um, they can be high professionals like lawyers or doctors. I mean, you name it, it's the whole gamut of people. They, they, they kept saying, you're going to have to teach whoever your daughter is going to go with. You're going to have to teach them how to dance. Well, swing came into being with the young crowd, and she was right there on top. Now they get in line to dance with her. I have to squeeze my way in to get her now. The backbeat of Swing's resurgence and the essential thread that ties together the style, feel, and attitude of the movement is the music. To be fair, just like fashion get-ups, the music varies throughout the neo-swing scene. It encompasses several decades of an American musical legacy. I love the fact that it's so much a part of American history. I love the fact that you have to be a damn good musician to be able to play it. You can't really fool people in swing. It's not like a garage rock band where four guys can, can get some guitars and, and start playing music pretty quickly. You have to have a certain level of skill. You just don't learn how to play that style of music. I mean, it, it, it takes a while to learn how to play jazz music, you know? Swing music, once you listen to it, you dance to it, after a while, you get a feel for it. And it's a very deep feeling uh, that uh, uh, it makes you feel good, makes you want to get up and move around a little bit. Just as it was in Swing's original day, it doesn't matter how popular the band is or how many records they sell, when people go out for a night of Swing, they want to dance. In truth, when you're dancing, uh, 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 you're not paying attention to the personality uh, of, of the band performers um, uh, and because you yourself are the activity, are the show, and so you might as well play a record. There's an interesting dynamic between musicians and dancers, which was also true 50 years ago and it's like a, a dysfunctional marriage they need each other but they can't really quite get along if we played and all anyone ever did was just swing dance and worried about our tempos and worried about the type of song that we were playing it would bug me a lot there were many reasons for the demise of the original swing years one was that the local and regional bands across the country could not keep up with the changes in popular music Almost every town in the United States had a swing band, but they were not professional musicians. I don't think they could compete with what was happening with uh, uh, Duke Ellington and Stan Kenton and Woody Herman. They were on the cutting edge in the mid-1940s, right at the end of the war. But that was difficult for, say, other bands to emulate. They couldn't follow it. They could, it wasn't like Glenn Miller's In the Mood that they could do so well. In addition, it proved too costly for a big band to travel in the late 1940s. Only the very well-known bands could afford that luxury. And then there were records. Hi-fi stereos became more affordable. Jukebox joints took over from dance halls. The big bands had gone away because they became economically too expensive. The, the age of the singer came in. Most of the singers like Doris Day and Co. came out of big bands. And so the records that sold at the start of the 1950s were records of singers. I hate to lay it on Frank, but uh, uh, when it was the Sinatra and the vocalist era, whatever it was, there was almost like no dancing, you know. You saw guys in red tuxedos and girls uh, with uh, uh, beautiful gowns on, uh, some of them wearing white gloves, <laughs> and, uh, and you'd just play one ballad after another, and they'd sort of walk around. And there was no feeling for the dance. 
what they called it the businessman's bounce, and you, you, there was no art to it. You just, you just, you just stagger or shuffle. And perhaps the main reason for the demise of swing was because the big band music that people used to dance to evolved into a level of sophistication which the general public either wouldn't or couldn't follow. In a way, you could say that musicianship in the United States began to outdistance the ability of, 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 of their listeners to cope with it. We couldn't understand it. A lot of us couldn't. You almost had to be a musician to go along with it. And then here came rock and roll. <laughs> It was exciting music, it was danceable music, and they were still doing swing dancing to rock and roll in the beginning. But then in comes the enemy of, of couple dancing, the twist. And I was actually shocked when the twist came in, because no longer were people actually touching and embracing. They were dancing with themselves. And I think the 1960s to around about the 1980s was a period of narcissism, where people were almost a master battery process, where they, where they wanted to just do their own thing with themselves. It was a very selfish era. It was the, you know, they called it the me decade, I think, in the 80s and the 70s was certainly that. But then, in the 80s, things start to change, but underground. Slowly, there's a, there's a groundswell of, of young people, especially here in Los Angeles, who want to dance together again. But what do they dance to? They start dancing to rockabilly music. By the 90s, they have got back to the old swing music. We discovered these 40s jump and jive groups, and then they go even further back and they start getting interested in the big swing bands uh, of the 30s and 40s. Despite the growing popularity of the swing revival, it has been suggested that like most everything, what's in today will inevitably be out tomorrow. But many people in the swing world disagree. The amazing thing as it occurs to me when I watch the young people swing dancing, it does not seem to be a fad. They have invested too much time in learning this dance. The people who are into it will not let the clubs die out. They will buy the albums of the different bands. They'll keep the scene alive. I don't think you're going to see it die out again because of that. Not necessarily that it's going to keep getting bigger. It's just that it's always going to have its own little niche. Every good thing, it comes to an end. They don't like it, but it's going to end sometime. And it's marvelous, it's a big resurge now that it's a new generation, but it's different. It won't be the same as we had it in the, in the, in the swing in years. The new swing era is going to be different. 52, I went in the army and went overseas and spent four years in Germany. When I got back, uh, I got, there wasn't much of a dance scene going that I ran into. And then, of course, the twist came in in 1960, and that was the end of partner dancing when the twist came in. So I then spent 30 years raising a family, and now I'm spending the rest of my life dancing. You get a whole new dance, a lot more fun, uh, and you get to meet people, you know, so it's not a dark room where everybody's, you know, moving their head together. You know, the people are a lot more friendly, and, they, and you can walk into a swing setting and get asked to dance by practically anybody. Everybody becomes kind of equal on the dance floor because it's due to your uh, ability, not so much your looks or anything else. It's the kind of social scene where I can get on a plane, get off in any city in this country, go to a dance place, and if somebody's doing Lindy Hop, we have a mutual friend. It is sexy because you do have that very close physical dancing, but it's not, it's not threatening. Um, 
would, I don't think it is anyway. It's a good tie between generations also, because then you see young people go, and you also see like the older generation people going there to swing dance, and they kind of give it a nice blend. I think because modern music has got to a, a certain level where um, it's just going down, it's getting more you know, depressing, more angry, you know, it's not so much music, and people are looking for a change. They want to hear real bands playing real music, um, and just go out and have some fun. I kicked around this dusty old town for too long Hard times have hit, prosperity's been here and gone but Now my outlook is rosy Cause I know I can be cozy On a mountaintop, where my journey will stop Next door to a candy shop I'm headed out west, out where the living is best I played the fool by keeping it cool as can be Between a rock and a hard place Ain't no place for me That's why I'm back in my grip Cause I'll be making that trip I'm on a fast train And I'll be traveling light Before long I'll be out of sight I'm headed out west Out where the living is best the grass ain't greener on the other side of the fence but i'm the kind of dreamer who thinks going for broke is just good common sense the creases in my head are deep and my shadow's grown long this california fever won't leave me alone if i could be more specific i'm on the southern pacific Hey, conductor, I got my ticket in hand. It's stamped for the promised land. I'm headed out west, out where the living is best. Stand for the price. 